what the government is working on is to figure out how to do this at scale, meaning how do we move from building 20 of these to building 100 of these per month. That's right. Government is working hard to ramp up the supply of shelter under the National Social Housing Program. It's one of the exciting developments going into the new year that awaits. We are sure you too have some personal targets for 2023. Remember, success is hard work meets preparation. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. It promises to be another lineup filled with insightful content as we guide you into a new year you can make your own. Stay tuned. How many more must die because of reckless drivers? How fast is too fast? Make we take time, no man? Obey the rules of the road. Drive with care. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, December 28, 2022. The states of public emergency SOEs for St. Anne, Clarendon, St. Catherine, St. James, Westmoreland, Hanover and Kingston and St. Andrew have been reimposed for another 14 days. The security measures took effect at 12 a.m. this morning, with Prime Minister Andrew Holness making the announcement in a press conference at Jamaica House earlier today. He says that while the security forces had reasonable success in controlling the number of murders leading up to and during the Christmas season, the threat levels remain elevated. The threat levels for ongoing gang conflicts, contract killings, organized robberies of businesses, hijacking of goods in transit, and various confidence scams that lead ultimately to the loss of life, spreading of fear, and depriving entire communities of their freedom to pursue their business and happiness. That threat level remains elevated and extensive in scale. Asserting that the priority is to save lives and preserve the freedom of ordinary citizens, Prime Minister Holness says the government will continue to be relentless in its efforts to control murder specifically and crimes generally. We will continue to use all measures available to us. We will use the SOEs when necessary. Criminals and criminal masterminds should take no comfort that the time for declaration is short. We are and we will continue to use all lawful powers within our means to control crime and to save lives. Members of the diplomatic community are being engaged to increase exposure for the Gastronomy Center at Devon House as part of efforts to enhance gastronomy tourism locally and increase visitor arrivals. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett, who announced the initiative recently, says this will create a new product in the gastronomy arrangements in Jamaica and go a long way in further enhancing the value of Devon House as a great attraction. To kickstart the program, the first in a series of dinners involving the diplomatic community was hosted at the facility recently. It was organized to expose members of the diplomatic corps to the unique culinary offerings of Jamaica and at the same time engage their interests in participating in this international gastronomic exposure. This will see every country represented in Jamaica taking on one dinner arrangement per month and inviting the rest of the world to come and enjoy the culinary delights of their own country. The first dinner involved representatives from 10 countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, South Africa and China. Additionally, Minister Bartlett says a pop-up kitchen will be established in 2023 to enhance the food-related offerings at Devon House. This pop-up kitchen will be supported by a small farmer's market with fresh fruits and vegetables, condiments, meat, fish and other proteins to enable individuals to come in and prepare a full-fledged meal. Highly qualified chefs will participate in this program, offering an engaging experience. Devon House was named Jamaica's first gastronomy centre in 2017 by Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett. Approximately 30 farmers in West Central St. Catherine have received knapsack sprayers to help boost their production. The knapsack sprayers are used by farmers for spraying different chemicals in the fields, including pesticides. They were presented by the Member of Parliament for the area, Dr. Christopher Tufton, during a recent farmer's market held at the Green Acres Commercial Complex in the parish. 
The farmer's market, which was being staged for the fifth year, is organized by Dr. Tufton in partnership with the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, and the Social Development Commission. He says the annual event provides an opportunity for citizens to shop for fresh produce at reasonable prices. St. Catherine Parish Manager for RADA, Ruth Barrett, adds that it enables farmers to connect with consumers directly. Healthcare service delivery at the Cornwall Regional Hospital has been bolstered with the donation of 20 nebulizers. The medical equipment, valued at $300,000, were recently handed over to the hospital by the V. Mansukani Foundation. The donation was facilitated by Custis Rotolorum for St. James, Bishop Conrad Pitkin. The Cornwall Regional Pediatric Department will receive the majority of the nebulizers. Head of the department, Dr. Carlene Grant Davis, says there has been an increase in the number of children with respiratory illnesses being treated at the institution, making this donation useful and timely. The hospital's acting CEO, Lennox Wallace, says he is pleased that the private sector continues to partner with the Health and Wellness Ministry to improve service delivery across Jamaica. Deepak Mirpuri, who handed over the equipment on behalf of businessman and the foundation CEO, Gal Mansukani, says the donation is being made to honor Mr. Mansukani's son, who succumbed to asthma complications in April. The foundation also donated 40 nebulizers to the Bustamante Hospital for Children earlier this year, and Mr. Mapuri says other projects will be done in education and health. And finally, data collection for the 2022 Population and Housing Census, which was previously scheduled to end this month, will be extended into the first quarter of 2023. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, says this is to ensure maximum coverage of the Jamaican population. Data collection commenced in September 22 on a phased basis. Since then, census takers have been deployed island-wide, but Statin says there are more persons to be counted. It provides benchmark estimates about the size of the population, as well as important demographic and socioeconomic indicators for policy planning and decision-making by the government, private sector, and other key stakeholders. In keeping with the 2022 census tagline, you count, me count, all of we count, Statin is encouraging everyone to cooperate with the census takers as the Institute completes this important national exercise. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Perhaps you may be so happy this time of the year, all because you are welcoming a new bundle of joy to your family. Yes, these special little ones bring remarkable joy whenever they show up throughout the year. Of course, we want to ensure that mom and baby are doing well. So, take heed to this best practice for the special pair. Every child has the right to enough nourishing food to grow well and flourish. For the very young, breast milk remains the best food source. Data from the World Health Organization shows that breast milk, as the natural first food for babies, provides all the energy and nutrients that the infant needs for the first six months of life. And it continues to provide up to half or more of a child's nutritional needs during the second half of the first year and up to one-third during the second half year of life. Breast milk provides much-needed antibodies to protect babies against all kinds of infections. The colostrum or foremilk, which is the first milk produced by mothers after giving birth, is the baby's first immunization against some infections. Babies who are exclusively breastfed have less episodes of diarrhea, acute respiratory infection, and skin conditions. Appropriate breastfeeding practices, therefore, have the potential to reduce infant mortality in children ages five years and younger by 14%, while appropriate complementary feeding up to two years of age is capable of preventing an additional 6% of deaths in this age range. 
Breastfeeding also establishes a close loving bond between mother and baby. In addition, mothers benefit from improved postpartum recovery, reduced iron loss, and decreased risk of breast and ovarian cancers. Another benefit? Mothers need not spend on infant formulas, which can be a huge financial burden. Breastfeeding is a universal solution that has proven to improving the health, well-being and survival of women and children around the world. It helps to prevent malnutrition in all its forms, ensures food security for infants and young children, and thus helps to bring people and nations out of hunger and the poverty cycle. That's big. That's quite profound. Men can actively participate and support the breastfeeding mother. So even, for example, if the milk is expressed and um, placed in a clean container or cup, then the father can be the one to feed the child from the cup with the breast milk. In cases where the mother is breastfeeding, the father can support her by doing chores to ease her burden. Some quick tips on breastfeeding for mommy. Mommy, to eat from all the seven food groups that keep you healthy. Continue taking your maternal supplements. Remember, baby is getting all its nutrients from breastfeed milk. And make sure that when baby sleeps, you sleep, because babies don't have a special time to sleep. So you have to get rest when baby sleeps. Mothers who choose not to breastfeed are encouraged to discuss this issue with their healthcare provider. Individual counseling on breastfeeding is important for dispelling any myths or concerns and we need to embrace the traditional approaches as it relates to um, lactating mothers, as it relates to um, development of our, our, our newborns. And there is very little technology that is going to change that reality, that the breast is best and is still the best. Medical experts recommend the initiation of breastfeeding within half hour of birth. Do not give newborns any food or drink other than breast milk unless medically indicated. And encourage breastfeeding on demand. Also, don't give artificial teats or pacifiers to breastfeeding infants. The hope for the ministry is that every child receives a fair opportunity at benefiting from the tremendous nutritional and other critical values, psycho, emotional, physiological, economic, and hygienic advantages of breastfeeding. Do what's best for your child. Breastfeed and give them a healthy start to a long life. We continue our guide with a look at navigating the realities of this time of the year by protecting the core of what drives us forward. Hi, I'm Orchid. I know, I know. When you hear my name, you think of luxury, strength, and beauty. But currently, there is nothing beautiful about my situation. I am unemployed, having lost my job to the economic effects of COVID-19, and I don't know how long I can cope. Plus, I've struggled with mental illness in the past. There are so many thoughts flying through my head during the days, and at night, others keep me up. I understand that being down sometimes is a natural part of life, but it's not that. The stress, the anxiety, the worry, they keep getting worse. Of course, some days are better than others because I have medication to help. But even with that, some days are really bad. Okay, you may feel bad for me, and empathy is fine. But here is a bit of good news. I've been learning some techniques to help me deal with the problem. So if your story sounds similar to mine, then maybe you could apply these techniques as well. There is a direct correlation between what you eat and how you feel. And some foods have an enduring impact on your mental health. How do you feel after drinking a cup of coffee? Or how do your children react after having sugary drinks? 
You get my point, right? So if you're struggling with mental illness, now may be the time to start eating a healthy and balanced diet. Here's what we're adding. Various fruits and vegetables, and lots of it where possible. Our whole grain bread and cereals are a good addition to the mix. So too are nuts, seeds, dairy products and proteins in the right proportion and lots and lots of water. Never forget that any diet that's good for your physical health is just as good for your mental health. If alcohol is in your glass too often, then it might be a contributor to your mental illness. The truth is that while many of us drink alcohol to change our mood or to deal with things like worry or abandonment, the effect is quite fleeting. Alcohol withdrawal is real and there's nothing good about it because when that drink wears off, you'll only feel worse. And of course, there's the damage too much alcohol does to your body. Occasional light drinking is okay and enjoyable for a lot of people. Just remember, everything in moderation. And just like alcohol, smoking or using drugs provides a short-lived high. And after that, then what? Cigarette and drugs don't solve the problems associated with mental illness. They only mask and eventually worsen them. Here's another link between body and mind, exercising. When we exercise, the activities release endorphins that improve our mood and provide a relaxed sensation throughout the mind and body. Regular exercise can improve your self-esteem and help you concentrate, all while keeping the brain and other organs healthy. And get this, exercising doesn't have to just be about going to the gym or doing sporting activities. It can be as simple as a walk, anything that keeps your mind active. Sleep and good mental health are good friends. When you get enough sleep, it is easier to cope with stress, solve some problems, concentrate and even think positively. While many doctors recommend 8 hours of sleeping, your body will tell you how much you need. You'll know you're getting enough when you do not feel so sleepy or extremely tired during the day. I get that sometimes we have a lot to do. And it is easy to think that we can get more done if we can cut back on our sleep time. But get this, it becomes harder to get things done when we do not get enough sleep. If things are getting too much for you and it's becoming hard to cope, then ask for help. Your family or friends may be able to offer a listening ear or even practical solutions. You could even consider joining a support group or find a counselor to help you deal with your feelings. It's important to know that there are effective treatments for mental illness and people who get proper care can recover and learn to cope and experience fulfilling lives. The tinting of your windscreen, cut it out. Public passenger vehicles, according to the Transport Authority Act, not supposed to have tints. I'm appealing to motorists out there. We have removed many plates because of fandangles that are on the motor vehicle. Colorful lights, red light, purple light, blue light, and these color, multicolored lights. Get them off. I've noticed some trends out there where there is different type of license plates on motor vehicles. Only the Jamaican issued driver's license plates are to be on the motor vehicles. Once you transport any passenger in a motor vehicle, ensure that they are buckled, whether they are on the front or they are on the back. Um, the seatbelt gives people a fighting chance to survive the crash. Many people have died who never give themselves a fighting chance. How many times have I said, at this time of the year so far, not to belabor the point, but this is a special time of the year. One in which joy is spread, but so too the solid waste produced from our celebrations. We urge you to practice composting and other waste recycling activities to reduce the quantity of garbage sent to our landfills. Government is on the mission. and Let's see how one particular initiative is helping to create a culture of cleanliness in our communities. Our best 
effort, the National Solid Waste Management alone cannot clean up Jamaica, cannot clean up Maypen. We have to get the buy-in of the residents. What is bag it up? Bag it up is simply saying to you, take responsibility for the solid waste that you generate. As small as a ice cement bag, paper, as small as a Wrigley's wrap, don't throw it out through the car window. Don't drop it at your foot. Put it in a bag. Pack it up. Bag it up so that we can come and take it. We want to encourage containerization in the very minimum. We don't want you to believe that it's only when you have a lot of garbage that you must take responsibility for it. We want you to take responsibility for just a little biscuit paper. Even the little biscuit paper. The little thing that wrap up the little bun that you eat. The little party bag. We want everything to be properly containerized. SPM Waste Management, a regional company of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, launched the community-based project Bag It. It seeks to address issues associated with littering in the town of Mapen Carindon. Research shows that vendors and passengers in public transportation vehicles are among the main contributors to littering in the parish's capital. The Bagget campaign wants to change behaviors associated with improper solid waste management and implement effective measures for containerization. Maypen Town Centers is one of those heavily populated town centers. So we decided that Maypen Town Center is one of those areas that we should start by sending the message. We want residents to understand that with garbage not being properly containerized, right, it will contribute to the flooding of the garbage in the town. We have our sanitation crew who start to clean the town centers from as early as 4 a.m. each morning. But when you move through the town centers, like around 9, 10 a.m., it's like the town has been swept. Bagget is one initiative um, that we are partnering with the, with the Maypen Parish Council. We are partnering with the vendors, we are partnering with the taxi owners and operators, and we are partnering also with some of the businesses in the town centers. Now, we have made some bumper stickers to put on some of the taxi, and we will be requesting, asking some of these taxi owners and operators to help us to spread the message, to encourage passengers who traverse in their taxi on a daily basis not to throw the garbage through the window. As small as a box, box you know, bag juice, whatever it is, it helps to contribute to flooding. So we want, to, we want residents to desist from dumping. I don't know if I'm my passing, I'm going to throw no garbage for out of my car. Because we have a bag, see there? Any passenger eating my car and throw things through my window, I throw them out of my car at the same time. I must leave it in the car and at the end of the day I took it out, chuck it in the bin. Now, if persons want to eat in the car and instead of them throwing the garbage outside the window, they can put it in the car, in the bag. As it relates to the, 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 the vendors, we have made some bibs and we'll be giving those bibs to some of the vendors in the market as much as possible. Now with the bibs what will happen is that they will wear the bibs and the bibs will bear the sign bag it and also do the right thing. Now the, we are asking the vendors in Maypen Town Centre to talk to some of their customers who come in on a weekly and a daily basis. So listen, look here, just stop throwing the garbage all over the market because guess what? When the garbage clog up the drains, it helps the market to flood out. It's a good purpose to that we should put our garbage in and don't litter the place and keep our surroundings clean. It is good for bagging it because if you bag it, you just take it up and put it in the truck, come and pick it up. I got a, the garbage bag and I'm going to put the garbage in it that I don't have to litter the place. Heal up, heal up. Big up the plastic then. Yo, don't mess the place here. Keep it real. Across the country, you have different audiences. So we have to target various groups to help us spread the message. So the vendors will help us. The taxi owners operators will help us. Right? The, the people who own the supermarkets, restaurants, etc. We want them to help us as well. Right across Jamaica, we have the challenge 
where some people believe that they must just throw things out. They must just discard items at will. We want to inculcate in the minds of people from very early that we are responsible for the solid waste that we generate. Today, the challenge to ensure road safety is an urgency for each of us. So to ensure you can continue enjoying the spirit of the season, we are here to help you recognize and avoid the red flags. First on our list, speeding remains the leading cause of crashes on our roads. We urge drivers to obey the speed limits on our highways and resist this dangerous practice. Second, distractions caused by cell phones. Be it the texting or answering of calls which breaks our concentration on driving, this is another poor road safety habit that needs to be avoided. Third on our list, pedestrians crossing the roads improperly. You need to make use of the designated crossings as long as they are available. Ensure the vehicles come to a stop before crossing and raise your hands to alert the driver. Also, please stop crossing on the highways and use the designated overhead bridges. Every little tip you put in practice will help to keep you safe on the roads, especially during the busiest period of the year. The new year stands before us like a chapter in a book waiting to be written. With that quote from American author Melody Betty, we are writing and packaging a new edition of Jamaica Magazine just for you. So be sure to join us again tomorrow at the same time on the same station. Missed aspects of today's show? Well, visit our website at jis.gov.jm for fresher and more informative content. You can also send us your feedback on today's show or any of our programs via email at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Theodore Henry, wishing you a prosperous 2023 when it comes. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.